Okay, hi friends. Uh, in this particular video, I'm giving you a brief idea about uh, timing diagrams of minimum mode of 8086. So in the previous video, I explained uh, minimum mode operation of 8086, right? So now let us see how to develop or how to draw the timing diagrams for uh, minimum mode operation of 8086. Let us see what are the various timing diagrams generally. Uh, I will read, I will write, memory read, memory write. Like that, uh, we can develop uh, different timing diagrams of uh, 8086 in minimum mode. Okay, let us see how to develop. Okay, it takes uh, three to five seconds. Okay, so in the previous video, I explained what is the role of uh, eight, uh, 8 to 8 for nothing but a clock generator. So, a clock generator mainly supplies uh, three pins called as reset, clock, and uh, ready. So, clock, reset, and ready. These three pins are supplied to 8086. Accordingly, it will work. Like that, uh, I already explained uh, clock generator function in the previous video. Uh, minimum mode also explained. So, <clears throat> in minimum mode operation, so we have uh, MN by MX bar. This MN by MX bar should be connected to VCC. VCC means then our mode is minimum mode. Okay, if it is connected to ground, then our mode is maximum mode. Okay, that is one point we should observe whether it's a minimum mode or maximum mode. Okay. Now coming to other, uh, here we have 21 multiplex letters and data lines. What are those? AD0 to AD15. So these are uh, 16 uh, multiplex lines. Similarly, A16 slash S3 to A19 slash S6. So these lines are also multiplexed here 4 and similarly BH bar slash S7 also multiplexed. Total put together we have 21 multiplexed lines are there. So these lines are passed to latches and here we are taking 3 latches. Why we are taking 3 latches? So this entire operation already explained in the previous video. Just a few, few summary points. So because of 3 latches, okay, each latch can separate 8 only. But here we have 21 multiplexed lines. So we need 3 latches. 1, 2, 3. Now these three latches will separate multiplex address and data and uh, multiplex address and status into pure address lines and status lines automatically. We have address lines. So how many address lines are coming from this? Total 20. A0 to A90. Okay. Next similarly, let us see trans receiver. So role of trans receiver is simply transmitting or receiving any information between 8086 and external uh, device. It is done through trans receiver only. So it, it will simply transmit 16 bit data. <coughs> Here we have two signals OU bar and T. So these two are controlled by DN bar and DT by R bar. Okay. Like that uh, the description of each pin okay described in detail in the previous video now coming to timing diagram this is actual uh, motto of your in this particular video how to develop timing diagram for that let us see uh, in minimum mode all control signals are generated by processor only see the controlling of latches similarly controlling of trans receiver so all are controlled by processor only here uh, in our timing diagram we should observe uh, what is the uh, representation of ale so when it is uh, high and when it is low then uh, um, all these multiplexed lines followed by DN bar, DT bar, similarly all these control signals like M by O bar, right bar, read bar. So these three. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6 main signals and multiplex lines. We are mainly considered for drawing the timing diagram. Okay. If it is maximum mode, we get some other uh, control signals. We will see later. Okay. Now let us see how to draw timing diagram for uh, minimum mode operation of 8086. Here my focus is uh, I am performing uh, IO operation, nothing but input operation, input that to read operation. So IO read. So what is the meaning of IO read? Processor wants to read data from input port. Okay. In order to achieve this, let us see how to make the timing arrangement. First and foremost step is clock. This is essential clock. So we know the clock generator will give you clock pulse to 8086. So clock generator, for example, it generates clock pulse like this. So this is called as a machine cycle or one bus cycle. 
So what is machine cycle? It's a combination of T1 to T4 uh, time. Generally, we are calling as a clock cycle or machine cycle or bus cycle. Okay. So in this uh, T1 is the first interval. So from this point to this point, we are calling as T1. T1 is the first uh, part of the machine cycle. Then this is T2, T3, and T4. So total T1, T2, T3, T4 put together, we are calling as one bus cycle or one machine cycle or one uh, clock cycle. Okay. Now. Uh, let us see first. So in uh, AG rate 6, so straight away address and data lines are not available. Similarly, status lines are also not available. All are multiplexers. Here, here we are observing 21 multiplexer lines. First AD0 to AD50. So here AD0 to AD50 must be multiplexed before T1. During T1, these lines are converting it into pure address and data. Data. After uh, T1, what happens? We have data lines are available. So data lines are available from T2 to T3. T2, T3 and T4 time. So in this time we have data lines. Okay. So uh, during the time of T1 what happens address and data lines are processed and uh, make it like a pure address lines and data lines. At the end what happens we have here uh, separately we have data lines and separately we have address lines from T2 to T4. So uh, what is the important signal here? ALE. So what is the role of ALE? ALE should be high during first part of the machine cycle only. Means during T1 time. If you observe T1 time. The, uh, during T1 time only, my ALE is high. So for every machine cycle during T1 time, ALE high. ALE high means it will take uh, multiplexed address and data lines, make it like a pure address and data lines after T1. Similarly, ALE takes uh, multiplexed address and status lines, make it like a pure address lines and status lines. Similarly, it will take BHE bar and S7 multiplexed line and make it like a pure BHE bar and uh, separate S7 line. Like that, ALE must be high during first part of the machine cycle and remaining cycle, it is low. Remaining time period, it is low. Again, for next cycle also, T1 time on, T2 to T4 time again on. Like that, we are representing ALE. And remember, AD0, AD15, similarly, BHE bar slash S7, similarly, A16 slash S32, A19 slash S6. All these lines must be processed during T1 time and after T1, uh, uh, these lines are act like a address lines, pure address lines, pure data lines, pure status lines. Okay. Now coming to M by I over. See what is my our requirement? Now our requirement is uh, I/O operation. Okay. So when it is I/O, if my I/O bar is uh, so in order to activate uh, I/O, so uh, my signal must be low. M by I/O bar must be zero. Then we can select uh, I/O. For example, I need memory. So then I need to select one for selecting uh, uh, memory. One for selecting I/O, it should be zero. So here also where data is available in that time only M by IO bar must be high. So generally preferably M by IO bar signal must be high during T2 to T4 time. T2 to T4 time. So we should represent uh, see M by IO bar must be either low or high. So in this example if you observe low means IO. High means memory. Is it read or write decided by read bar signal and DT by R bar signal. Okay. So uh, for, uh, for, uh, for reading IO it should be low for uh, receiving uh, memory it should be one like that uh, in this uh, representation he mentioned both so io read means low memory read means high like that if it is read operation what happens so uh, this read bar signal must be activating after t1 similarly m by o bar signal is also uh, is it low or high only after t1 means t2 to t4 time only m by o bar signal must be either high or low for selecting memory high for selecting IO low only from T2 to T4. Here also there is a small uh, correction. T2 to T4 time only. So from this time only, T2 to T4 time only, it should be either high or low depends on the requirement. For example, uh, before during T1 time, what happens? It is not high, not low, nothing but it is in the inactive state. Means we are not giving, it is like a tri-state pin we are giving. So cross. So we are not giving 0, not giving 1. So in that case, what happens? No need of selecting memory, no need of selecting IO during T1 time. So only after T1, we are selecting M by I/O bar is uh, zero for selecting I/O and one for selecting uh, memory. Okay, and read bar also should be high. Okay, up to T1, up to T1 time it should be high. After T1, and from T2 to T4 it should be low. Low means we are selecting uh, read operation. One means we are inactivating read operations here. Read bar should be uh, high up to T1. After T1 it should be low and should be low only for up for. Uh, T4 time from T2 to T4 time, uh, read bar should be low. Then it indicates that processor performing read operation. Okay. 
uh, which read IO read. If it is uh, IO bar is low, IO read. If M by IO bar is high, memory read like that. Next, what is the other point? DT by R bar. This is also, uh, we need to make it clearly DT by R bar. What is the name? Data transmit slash receiver bar. If it is one, uh, then uh, processor uh, transmit data to other memory device or IO device if it is one. If it is zero, processor uh, receiving data from memory device or IO device. Okay. Now in this case, what happens? We need to perform read operation for that. Uh, DT by R bar should be low from uh, T2 to T4 time. And before uh, T2, it should be tri-state. Tri-state means it is not zero, not one, like a cross. So no zero, no one. Means we are not uh, activating transmitter and we are not activating receiver bar signal. Then what is the other one? Data enable bar. So for transmitting data uh, to trans receiver, this DN bar should be uh, enable. So when it is enabled, where data is available, in that time only we are enabling. So now where we have data only from T2 to T4 time. So DN bar should be low during T2 to T4 time only. And before uh, T2, it should be high only. Okay. For every machine cycle before T2, before T2, it should be high. During T2 to T4, it should be low. Okay. Like that, uh, we should activate a DN bar during T2 to T T4 time. Similarly, DT by R bar also activating during T2 to T4 time. Okay. So depending on the read and write, uh, if it is a read operation, uh, one uh, zero should be activating. If it is write operation, one should be activating. Nothing but uh, high for transmitting, zero for receiving. Similarly, read bar should be low from T2 to T4 time. M by O bar should be 1 for uh, memory operation and 0 for IO operation from T2 to T4 time only. Before uh, uh, T2, uh, this should be in a, a tri state. Here also DT by R bar also before T2, it should be tri state. ALB should be high during first part of the machine cycle, that is T1 only. Remaining T2 to T4 time, it should be low. Okay, and multiplex lines are act like a multiplex lines up to T1 and during T1 time it starts uh, uh, converting. After T1, uh, they are act like a pure address lines, pure status lines, okay, and pure data lines from T2 to T4. In that uh, time only, data is available. So in that time only, we can perform any operation. Like that, uh, we can analyze uh, IO read operation. Similarly, let us see uh, write operation, where changes are required. In same way, so clock is essential, multiplex address and uh, state address lines. So similarly, uh, address and data lines are required. ALE should be high during first part of the machine cycle. Here also T1 time. M by O bar should be 1 for uh, memory write operation, 0 for IO write operations here. IO, for IO write operation, it should be low. For memory write operation, should be high. Write bar. So in previous uh, read operation, we are activating uh, read bar signal. Now here we are activating write bar signal. This is only the change from previous to this one. Here a write bar should be low from T2 to T4 time. And before T2, it should be high. Okay, this is one change, remember. DT by R bar also another change. So what is the DT by R bar? DT by R bar is uh, for write operation, processor, uh, data, processor uh, writes data to other. So in that case, what happens? DT should be high. So DT should be high for uh, transmitting data to uh, the writes data to other device. For that, DT uh, should be 1. So DT should be 1 uh, during T2 to T4 time. And before T2, it is inactive, nothing but tri state. So remember, DT by R bar also high during T2 to T4, where data is available. See, run that time only high. So it is also from uh, T2 to T4 time. T2 to T4 time, it should be high. And before uh, uh, T2, what happens? It, is, it should be like a tri state. So no. 1, no 0 so here. Like a dotted line indicates we are not activating. Similarly, DN bar should be enabled only from T2 to T4. Only two changes here. 1, 2. The rest of the representation is same. So, read bar becomes right bar. In previous for read operation, DT by R bar is uh, uh, low from T2 to T4 time. Whereas here for write operation, DT by R bar should be high uh, from T2 to T4. This is the difference. Okay. Like that, uh, See, like that we can analyze uh, the timing diagram for, okay, like that we can analyze timing diagram for uh, um, operation of 8086 in both uh, IO read, IO write, similarly memory read and memory write operations, okay. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please kindly share uh, my video to your friends and subscribe my channel. Thank you.